On today's episode, we're talking about how to love your enemies. Uh, believe it or not, the Bible says that you're supposed to love your enemies, and it gives a lot of verses and instruction on how you're supposed to treat your enemies, which is really kind of countercultural. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've got my Apologetics Press study Bible right here. Got to plug it. Got to plug it. It's got great stuff. It's the only study Bible I recommend. Um, but let me just read this to you, okay? Whereas the New Testament says to love, bless, do good, and to pray for those that persecute you, this is going to reference the Quran, which is the the religious book that uh, Islam uses, okay? Mm-hmm. This is basically what, and Jesus also said this, whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. So those that persecute you, bless them, do good to them. If they strike you on this cheek, turn the other cheek. And to love your enemies, the Quran says, one who attacks you, attack him in the like manner as he attacked you, Surah 2, 194. Um, So there's a difference between Christianity and other world religions, right? Um, That's one of the primary ones, and that is how do you respond to somebody that attacks you? How do you respond to somebody that persecutes you? And so in that episode today, we're going to talk about what you do to that, your enemy, what you do to them. How do you respond? Um, Love your enemies. What are, what are some different ways that we can do that? What are some different ways the Bible advises that we're supposed to show to other people? Well, Luke six twenty seven, do good to them that hate you. Yeah. Do um, you want to elaborate on that or just? Okay. I mean, uh, I suppose a, an example you can give, something that might be typical in our culture today. Most everybody, most everybody goes to work or they go to school or they go to college. Mm-hmm. And most everybody has dealt with someone in their life at some point. You know, there's always that person that's out to get you, so to speak, mm-hmm. um, to different various levels. Sure. They've got something bad to say. Sure. Maybe they're trying to bully you if you're you're still in uh, school. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a little bit more common there. But there's workplace bullying, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, you can choose to engage in that same activity yourself and, and do the same thing back to them. Or you can be the person that rises above and decides that you're going to – when they come up in conversation, you're not going to say the bad things about them. Yeah, You're going to say, you know, I really appreciate the way that they do this. I understand that there's some, some things going on, but really, if you look at the big picture, that maybe they, they talk a lot, they're very critical of others, but they work hard, you know. So doing good to others, it can be a verbal thing that you can say. You Taking can the high road. Yeah, you can choose to take the high road. You can say good things about them. Uh, maybe... Uh, you hear about something that's happened to them in their life. They've lost a spouse. They've lost a loved one. Uh, they're your enemy. They bullied you all this time. They've criticized you. They've done whatever. They've thrown you under the bus. It doesn't matter. You go and be there for them. Yeah. I mean, maybe you don't have the relationship where you can go to the, the funeral or the event or whatever it may be, but uh, you can certainly write a card, mm-hmm. be sincere, mm-hmm. be kind, be polite, leave the condolences basket, do something for them. Uh, maybe they lost their job. Mm-hmm. It, continue with that same thing. Um, if you know good and well, they're going to be out on the street. If they don't get help, help them out. Yeah, you know, you basically brought up the idea of you're supposed to treat others in the golden rule. Treat yeah. others as you want to be treated. Yeah. And you made the distinction between if somebody's mean to you, what's the normal response? Be uh, mean right back yeah, to them. Yeah. You know, if somebody's out to get you, throws you under the bus, mm-hmm. you're just going to wait, right? Oh, that's, that's like what you just read from the, the Quran yeah, there, yeah, right? Yeah, that's yeah. that's the idea. It's, yeah. Hey, if someone does this to you, you do the same thing back. They persecute you, you do the same thing back to them. Whereas, you know, when Jesus talked about loving your enemies, Jesus basically said you do good to those that persecute you. And then he said that's the way you're going to show the distinction. That's the way that people are going to see that you're different because – the people being good to the people that love you, that's what everybody does. You know, everyone, even people who are, you'd say, you know, evil people, they love the people that love them. Yeah. I got you a know? good verse that'll tie into what both of you are saying. If you go to Romans 12, 17, repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, if it is possible, that's a good thing. As much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written vengeance is mine i will repay says the lord so man when it, it gets hard yeah. like at least we can know that god i mean he, he's going to take care of it in his own way as we just do our part in loving back to our enemies even when they're spitting on you or hating you yeah. and slamming your name in the ground the best thing we can do is like respond the way jesus would romans twelve twenty, the next verse therefore it's a quotation from proverbs 20, 25 
uh, oh. verses 21 and 22. That's cool. So there you go. Some more wisdom. <laughs> it says, therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. For if he's thirsty, give him a drink. In doing so, you'll heap coals of fire on his head. Now, I'm not really saying you shouldn't focus on the last part. I'm yeah. saying you should focus on the first part. But the Bible basically says, look, when you're doing good for somebody that's evil, in the end, they're going to be held accountable for their actions. That doesn't mean that it should change your actions as a Christian. Yeah, even if we are the best person on the planet and we do everything right, I mean, Jesus still died for me and he still died for that person. And he loves that person just as much as he loves me. And so it's like that humbles me to be like, I'm no better than him. Yeah. So I need to hate his sin, but I don't need to hate the sinner. Yeah. Because- Luke, Luke 6 35, but love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great. And you will be sons of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Yeah. You're exactly right. Yeah. I mean, you think about how did Jesus respond? Um, yeah. Look at his well, example. Yeah. He's like, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Yeah. Like, yeah. He, he died for the people that nailed him to the cross. That's right. Yeah. Like, yeah. You don't know what you, sometimes you don't know you're, maybe treating someone the wrong way and then some a friend or something calls you out and you're like hey man you're you're treating that person badly and you're like wow i didn't know that maybe, you know, maybe you don't know well think about i mean think about that with jesus right let's look at his example for a couple minutes jesus created all things that were created john 1 3. yeah jesus came to his own his own didn't receive him so jesus literally comes to his creation the people that he created he comes to them and they reject him right and then he still does what he still loves them. He loves them enough and goes and dies on the cross for them. Yeah. And while he's on the cross, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. It's Jesus didn't forgive them. Some people think, well, when he said that, it forgave everybody. No, it was an mm-hmm. attitude of forgiveness. Because if you look in Acts chapter 2, those people who basically are pricked in the heart and they say, wow, we did crucify the Messiah. Peter, they say to Peter, what do we need to do? And he didn't say, well, Jesus already forgave you. He said, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. Yeah. But what Jesus is saying on the cross, Luke 23, 34 Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Is he saying, look, they do not understand that they're killing the Messiah. When they turn, please forgive them. It's an attitude of forgiveness. Yeah, in episode one, we talked about Hitler. And it's like, Hitler did some evil stuff, but Jesus still died for him. And I mean, I would say he'd be an enemy of us, or Hitler would be an enemy of us because of what he did. But Jesus still died for him. I mean, I sin. I mean, so I'm no, I'm, you know, I haven't killed anybody, but. Jesus still died for both of us. Yeah. And so who am I to think, well, I'm, I'm so righteous that I shouldn't give love to an enemy. Yeah. You know, I, you said you haven't killed anybody. I was over the, the quarantine. We put some videos up on YouTube or on Facebook and it was like, did God cause the coronavirus is one I did. And I got a response from a woman that said, I want to study. So I called her and I won't say what her name was, but, um, I was talking to her about, we were studying through how to become a Christian. And I asked her, I said, have you ever killed anybody? Uh, because they were a Christian, like the Apostle Paul had. Because I was trying to explain to her, the Apostle mm-hmm. Paul had cast his vote against people, Acts 26, maybe 10. Um, he had arrested, drug off Christians to prison, and yet God was able to forgive him. And I said, have you ever killed somebody because they were a Christian? And she's like, well, not because they were a Christian. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, I, I murdered somebody, and I went to prison for it, and I got out. I'm trying to get my life right. Wow. And I was said, look, you realize you, you can be forgiven of that. I mean, that's the blood of the, the power of the blood of Christ. There's nothing you can do that will not be forgiven if you're willing to repent of it. I mean, even Christians were afraid of Paul. Yeah. But they, I mean, he was, he was a Christian though. He, yeah. Yeah. I mean, can you imagine Paul, you've heard about this guy who arrests Christians, Acts 9-2, I think he had letters of authority to go all the way to Damascus. It was like 140 miles maybe away just to arrest Christians. And which was a lot longer trip back then. It wasn't a two hour car ride. Um, <laughs> 100, 140 miles, something like that to go arrest Christians. And this guy then is converted and he comes to your congregation and you're like, what are you here for? I'm a Christian now. Yeah, sure you are. Right. Yeah. I mean, God will forgive. Look at that list of people in first Corinthians chapter six, verses nine and 10. It's a list of a lot of bad sins. Yeah. And verse 11 says they were washed. They were sanctified. <coughs> they were justified. Um, well, in this case, good old Barnabas, once again, the encourager, right? Yeah. I mean, what a perfect example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, he went and took Paul. Yeah. He brought him. Brought him to the people because they're likely saying, yeah, we heard of this Paul guy. Literally their enemy, right? Yeah. yeah. And but he, he brought them. He he embodied this. Yeah. yeah. And you look to it, if we're supposed to basically imitate, uh, imitate Christ, right? Mm-hmm. You've got the first Christian martyr, Stephen, in Acts chapter 7. What did he say? He basically said whenever he's being stoned, he said, don't count this sin against, against them. Me. Yeah. Just like Jesus, you know? Well, it makes me think about Proverbs 16. Mm-hmm. It's talking about honeycombs. Okay. Uh, go to verse 24. 
This is how we can respond back. Uh, pleasant words are like a honeycomb, sweetness to the soul and health to the bones. And it kind of goes back to what Scott said. Like, you, there's no telling. Maybe this enemy has had an awful life, and all he this person knows is that, you know, how to respond. And so maybe we could be the only Jesus, I've heard people say, the only Jesus that person ever sees, and maybe that changes him, you know. Maybe our words help that person and, and whatever they're going in their life to become a good guy. Well, it, it just it sets you apart from others, you know. If yeah. they're mean to everybody and you're nice to them, they're going to be like, well, what's wrong with this guy? You know, like, why is he nice to me? I'm mean to everybody and everyone's mean to me except for this person. I mean, so that, that can sort of open up a door. What about, um, I mean, there's so many Bible verses that talk about, what did Jesus say in the Sermon on the Mount about praying for your enemies? Tell me about it. Well, he said, I mean, he basically said, you've heard that it said you shall love your neighbor, hate your enemy. I say to you, love your enemies, Matthew 5, 44. Now, bless those who cur uh, curse you, do good to those who hate for you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be, and if you do all these things, here's, here's the result, that you may be the sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes the sun rise on the evil and the good, sends rain on the just and the unjust. So he basically says, look, God does good to those who are, love him and who hate him, you should do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Earlier. Yeah. how hard is it to pray for somebody that is an enemy of yours? Yeah, it really depends. And you think about it, I mean, it, it it's, it's difficult to pray for somebody that's trying to hurt you. Yeah. But, uh, you know, your yeah. enemies can also be those who are trying to hurt your friends and your family. Yeah. I, um, I got a story about my wife. Uh, so we used to live in Raleigh, North Carolina, and she used to work for one of the TV stations there. And so I would go with her when she had like to film stuff, you know, just, you know, pretty girl on the street with a camera and a camera yeah. guy, people mess with her. So I would go with her and she was filming this spot out in front of this building and she wasn't bothering anybody. She was on public space. And this guy came out of his front yard and started like screaming at her about, you know, don't mess up my flower bed. We weren't even near his garden. He's like, don't get on my flower bed. You're going to ruin those flowers. And I'm like, what's he talking about? Well, of course, he's yelling at my wife. So yeah. what's my immediate reaction? Oh, man, I got I got hot. I yeah. was mad. And so, you know, I was just like, sir, we're not touching your flowers. We're not going to touch your flower, but everything's fine. Well, my wife, like, I, don't, I mean, I don't remember if she was about to cry or not. But we get back to the car, and I was still mad. I was so mad, like, you know, I should have said this to that guy. I should have said this. And my wife is like, can we pray for him? Oh, man. Don't we love, like, each of our, our wives just to point us back? Like, I remember the same thing, kind of like one – one story with my wife Megan she's just like we went through something and then she's like well you never know what they're going through in your life and you're like man like it humbles you and you're like yeah you, you really never know it points back to the shoes you were talking about someone could be facing something really hard but yeah when she said that I was like it was like a like a wake-up call because here I am you know this guy who thinks he's you know fairly spiritual and I'm angry at this guy and my wife is like l the embodiment of it she's like hey can we pray for him I'm like <laughs> I'm like what can we, well, I guess that's what we're supposed to do, right? Yeah. But I remember that was, I've had times in my life where she's been like, hey, let's pray for that person. There have been times, I remember one time specifically, I was on I-40. I know exactly, I was right before the Wade Avenue exit. I know exactly where I was. <laughs> and she was like, we should pray for that person. And I was like, I don't want to. Yeah. Because I was so angry. And she's like, no, we need to pray for him. Like, those are the things that, that's living it, you know? And yeah. so- Pray for your enemies. That's what it looks like in real life. Even if there was the times where I was like, oh, man, I don't feel like it. My wife's like, no, we need to do it. And she was the one who actually was, he was mean to her, not mean to me. Yeah, you were trying to stand up for her. Yeah. yeah. And she was like, let's pray for him. I remember thinking like, wow, I'll never forget that. They'll stick with me forever. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes there's moments where like, maybe it's a stranger, you know, like that guy. And then maybe, you know, it's, it's hard. And then there's times where you, if you know someone and you're personal with it, and then like, you know, hard times come about it's it is hard you're like man i don't i don't want to pray for that that yeah. person i don't want to love them or bless them um so you know those different moments are harder i think one verse i wanted to point out that we were talking about earlier that even the disciples faced people that when they went to town to preach the gospel um jesus told them like in luke 9 5 to uh, dust off your sandals and go on so like mm -hmm. there's an appropriate time to deal with some stuff and then you know then dust your sandals off yeah. figuratively for us, unless you're wearing sandals and then, yeah. you know, go on, you know, just leave it and go on. Yeah. Well, I mean, you basically said earlier too, you ba as, as much as is possible, live at peace with all men. Yeah. There's going to come times where you have enemies that you try to be nice to, and they don't want any part of it. And you have to use your judgment. It's a judgment call as to when to say, okay, I'm going to dust off my sandals. I'm going to move on because if you spend too much time focusing on this one 
person, you yeah. know? I mean, if you try to teach this person or, or start a relationship with somebody four or five times and they reject it every time, you have to at some point use your judgment and say, is it better for me to keep working on this person or how much more work could I be could be done if I move on and, and dust off my sandals and go to somebody else? Yeah. All right, so you guys might know this verse. And Scott, you might could look it up for me. Um, what is the verse? It's talking about when you share the gospel because, like, you're going to get enemies and that it might even divide up your family. Yeah. Like, I mean, or your friends, you know, it'll be times where when you share the gospel, you're going to face some tough times, and that's okay because, I mean, you're doing the right thing, even though it might cause some division. Yeah. You Luke, know, you love that person. You, you stick with Jesus. There's a couple different ones like that. The one I've got is Luke chapter 12. Um mm -hmm. Where he basically says, do you suppose I came to get, this is Luke twelve fifty one is where one of them starts. Do you suppose that I came uh, to give, an another one, if you want to look it up, is Matthew 10, 34 okay. through 36. I'll get that one. Um, do you suppose I came to bring peace on the earth? I tell you, not at all, but rather division. From now on, five and one house will be divided. Three against two, two against three. Father will be divided against son and son against father. Mother against daughter, daughter against mother. Mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. Daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So basically what he's saying is, look, like the gospel is going to divide people. There yeah. are going to be enemies in your own household. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, yeah. Um, and we yeah. Gotta, yeah. yeah. And it, well, this verse in 1 John 4.20 really, I think, uh, is written to the church and members of the church. Mm -hmm. But uh, the principle of it, you can apply um, outside of that. And it says, if a man say, I love God and hate of his brother, he's a liar. Yeah. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I guess the principle of it is uh, even if even if people are doing you wrong, you're still required to love them. And it says that if you don't learn to do that, yeah. that that really how can you claim that you love God whom who you've not seen? Well that's what I mean uh, that's yeah. what Matthew twenty five. Matthew yeah. twenty five, starting in verse thirty one, you have a judgment scene and it basically talks about you know, you saw someone naked and you said, be warmed and filled. Well, I think it's James too, but mm -hmm. you basically talk about you have uh, someone's naked and you clothe them. There was th thirsty, you give them a drink, hungry, you feed them. And they're like, Lord, when did we do that to you? And he's like, when you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. Yeah. So yeah, the way we treat others, the way we treat our brethren, that reflects actually how we love and how we treat God. Well, it's like the gospel doesn't just call us just to, just to like, not just to say words, but to actually act on what yeah. you're going to do. It's not yeah. just a one belief, but it's, you know, being obedient. So it's like, you know, like you said, like I could say I love you, but if I don't actually show you love and give love, then, mm -hmm. you know, your words are just nothing. Like, yeah. Well, that's why I think it's, it calls you to do, to act. It's yeah. not just something you say. I mean, oh, yeah. in Matthew, if I go back to Matthew chapter five, which is where I was earlier, there's such a long five verses, like 43 through 48, mm -hmm. uh, that Sermon on the Mount passage. Let me get back to Matthew chapter five. So he's talking about love those, do good to those who hate you. And then verse 46, for if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? If you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Everybody does that. You know, do you not, do not even the tax collectors do so? Therefore, you should be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. Now that word perfect there is teleos, teleos, whatever in Greek. It doesn't mean without flaw, right? Now, God is without flaw, yeah. but when we're supposed to be perfect, it means morally mature, complete in all things. So yeah. some people read that verse and say, so I have to be perfect? I can't mess up? That's not what the Greek word means. Yeah. You're, you're going to yeah. mess up. Yeah, yeah. So, and we're going to talk about that in another episode, too, about, you know, what happens whenever we sin. We have an advocate with the Father, the first John lesson. But, um, yeah, I mean, that's the golden rule, Matthew seven twelve: Do unto yeah. others as you'd have them do unto you. Yeah, and we need that right now, especially right now even in the country in the broad sense, right? Yeah. yeah. I love your enemies. The country right now is so divided. Man. It's so split up, right? Yeah. Um, everybody's got a different thought. They get a different opinion. And at the end of the day, we're going to go to the ballot box mm -hmm. and somebody's going to win. Are mm -hmm. we going to choose to treat our friends, our neighbors, our Christian brothers and sisters who may have thought something different mm -hmm. politically poorly because they didn't choose to do to, to devote the same mm -hmm. way that I did. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Not to try to get really deep off into politics, sure. but the point is, uh, we're talking about how to love our enemies. We've, we've looked at a lot of these passages. Yeah. The practical mm -hmm. application of it becomes very real, especially when you look at what's going on right now yeah. Oh, yeah. around us. How can we love those who we would perceive as trying to do harm to us? Yeah. Uh, what are some things that we can do day to day to show that? Well, I mentioned earlier about the, the workplace examples and things like that. Mm -hmm. Sure. Know, I've gone through these situations in my life. I'm sure y'all have too. I'm sure our viewers, our listeners have as well. Yeah. Um, you know, I grew up 
I grew up uh, 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 bullied sometimes by sure. a friend. You know what I say? Sure. I, don't, I don't know. It was, no. a, it was a really bad relationship, really, when you look back at things. Well, I, but, there were kids I wanted to yeah. be friends with because they were cool. They were the ones that bullied me, so yeah. I say they're my friend. But. Yeah, I was the younger guy. They were a little bit older, a few yeah. years older, a few grades ahead. I would always hang out with them. They would pick on me sometimes and things like that. And, uh, you know, as, as, as we got older and I started to go down my own path and they went down theirs in a different direction. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the guy I'm talking about really, uh, uh, he ended up dying from a, an overdose. Oh, wow. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to say is I reached a point where I had a choice that I could hold on to the negativity, mm -hmm. the bad feelings, mm -hmm. the bad relationship that we had in the past, yeah. or I could try to choose to start making things right. And unfortunately we didn't get to, we didn't really get to, uh, to talk a whole lot. Yeah. But, um, I did my best to try to visit, uh, maybe with his father some when he was, when he was still around. And I guess, I don't know. Uh, I'm not, I don't know if I can talk about a lot of this. I don't know if I yeah. should, yeah. but the, but the point is this, I guess, think about the, the people around you. Think about what's been going on and, and be the bigger person like we talked about earlier. Yeah. Be the one to approach and to go and try to make amends. Even if you know that person disagrees or if there's been bad blood, um, do your best to try to ignore that. It doesn't mean that at like sin doesn't exist sure. or at like you are obligated to just overlook everything that somebody does. But, but the point is what's the end goal. Yeah. 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 Do good to them because you hope why? that your yeah. example is going to, to, to soften their heart. Yeah. yeah. And to open up and to give you an opportunity where you can teach them the gospel. Yeah. I mean, if, if somebody's mean to you and you just you're mean right back, that's going to end that relationship. Whereas if someone's mean to me or someone speaks critically mm -hmm. and I reach out and say, Hey man, like, you know, are you okay? Yeah. Something, something going on now. They may not respond in that moment, but maybe later you're able to have a conversation with them about something much more important. Yeah. You know? I mean, what if, and what if your actions could change somebody? Um, it reminds me of what we talked about in a previous episode of like, they will know us by our love for people mm -hmm. and yeah. like, you know, I don't know. I always think about this. My mom always says, if you need me, I'm here for you, even at 3 a.m. And I always mm -hmm. think of that phrase, even at 3 a.m. And like, you know, people will know us. Like, and I think it's so good that you brought up the culture because, you know, we're still relevant and, you know, there's some crazy stuff going on in our culture right now. Mm -hmm. And so it's so important for us to, to remind ourselves and we're, we're not perfect, but to try to be known by our love and not for just uh, everything that we're against and what we, the bad things and everything, but you know, yeah. to, to be known for love and truth and point back to here and yeah. we got your back if you need us. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast has been sponsored by GBN, Gospel Broadcasting Network. You can download the app and start streaming every show, watch every episode and discover the answers to life's biggest questions today. Christians are going to face more and more pressure yeah, as uh, the, the climate cultural climate the political climate continues to go in the way that it's been going the mm -hmm. last 10 years whatever however many years back you want to go yeah uh you can't argue that it hasn't become more difficult in certain ways sure. for people to be christians yeah. and to be public about that and to say certain things and practice certain things without getting pushed back and now that's reached to the point where sometimes it's it's coming from the political spectrum um, we've got a choice to make right now in our attitude about how we're going to treat those who are pushing against us, whether we're going to, we're going to get down in the ditches and fight and brawl that out the same way that they're going to do, or if mm -hmm. we're going to have that attitude of grace. And well, mercy. you're going to lose if you do that. Yeah. You know, we, as Christians, you can't, you can't win the battle. Can't sling mud. No, because the other side, because if you, if you, the, if you're trying to be a Christian mm -hmm. and someone else has a different op opinion, and they sling mud, and you try to sling mud back, yeah, and they it. don't have Christian morals behind it, you're going to lose. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's like if you're trying to fight with a guy that's going to fight dirty because he yeah. doesn't think there's anything wrong with it. I mean, that, Jesus calls you to live a, a higher calling. Yeah. It's not to respond the same way everyone else does. It's to respond in a higher way, the way Jesus did. Man, this verse, I just I just happened to look down and see it. Yeah. But, um, it's like— What verse right. is it? Oh, <laughs> sorry. It's uh, Matthew uh, chapter 5, verse okay. 13 and 14. Okay. Actually, let's just go to 14. But I was going to say, like, you know— you know, as Christians, we are not perfect, and That's we right. choose to, like, every day wake up and say, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to mess up, but, you know, I'm going to keep on walking in the light, which yeah. we're going to talk about later. And Jesus has got me. And for what reason? It's like, so with all that, that everyday struggle, you lean into this verse. Like, we'll just go to 514 in Matthew. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, 
and then we'll just go on. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light, light shine, verse 16, before their men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Mm-hmm. So it's not saying we're perfect and we're going to be this light. It's like I'm your brother and I'm your sister, and we're going to do the best we can, and we're going to stick together through the hard times and love each other yeah. to be yeah. that light. It's supposed think, to be a beacon. You mentioned verse 13. I think that was appropriate too, salt of the earth. Yeah. If we lose that savor, what good are we? We're going to be useless. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, that goes against the whole point of why we're, why we're here as the church, which is what? To make known the what? You know, can you finish the verse? Sorry, the, mani- again. the purpose of the church. Manifold to make known wisdom. the manifold wisdom yeah. of God, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to do that partly by the way that we act and treat other people. Yeah. When you hear the parable accounts, and especially like the parable of the Good Samaritan, mm-hmm. right? That's who we're supposed to be. Yeah. That's who Jesus was trying to teach the Jews they should have been yeah. at that time. Yeah. Christians, we inherit that attitude, that principle. Mm-hmm. That's our goal. It doesn't matter what they do to us. At the end of the day, even if they kill us, yeah. we're going to be okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If we get down in the, in, in the ditches, as I said, or we start slinging the motor, we start trying to fight the way that they fight, uh, we're going to compromise our soul. That's we're right. going to compromise our values. We're going to compromise the church and the message that the church is supposed to be bringing. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, we're going to cause them to be even more lost yeah. and have yeah. even less opportunity to change themselves, yeah. to desire to change themselves and try to go to heaven. That's right. So, you're, I mean, that's spot on, man. It's That's exactly right. You're going to basically ruin any chance you have to be that light on the hill, to be yeah. a beacon to them. I saw some, some uh, quote. It was just like, you know, apologizing, like, for you know if you've seen a a misrepresentation of jesus you know you know it was apologizing for that it's just saying just go back to here like and to add on to what you were saying scott like you know what the scripture says like we've never seen jesus but you know we have faith in him and we're doing this for jesus and like there's some days you're like man this is really hard yeah like i gotta love that enemy or you gotta you know stand up for the good thing here or there especially in in our culture now like yeah it's really hard to be open about everything, but we're doing it because we love Jesus. And yeah, he didn't on. ask us to change the world by force. He asked us to change right. the world by example. Yeah, right. Luke 22, yeah. should we yeah. draw the sword, Lord? No, nope. yeah. my kingdom's not of this world, John eighteen yeah. thirty six. There's a different way to spread Christianity. Yeah. So you guys are exactly right. We can't be like Jonah in the Minor Prophets where God saves the people of Nineveh and, and he's, he's upset angry. about it. Yeah. No, <laughs> we need to be held to a different uh, a different standard and whenever you wonder what that standard is, you get frustrated, read your New Testament. See the way Jesus handled it. When you look at what Jesus encountered and you think about what you're going through, you're going to say, wow, Jesus had it way worse than I did. So, Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Authentic Christian Podcast. Hopefully it will help you in dealing with loving your enemies. And we hope that you'll be back with us next episode. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Authentic Christian Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by the Gospel Broadcasting Network, or GBN for short. You can hop on the App Store, search Gospel Broadcasting Network, and you can download the app. And there's this show, many other great shows that you can watch or listen to. Start learning more about the Bible and uh, why we're here, what our purpose is. Thanks for listening.